Welcome to an introduction to Arc Commander. So you see in Windows and on the desktop we have this this uh, R icon that we can double click on to start R off. And we could load up Arc Commander, which is which is a menu system. We could load that up using the packages and load package. Choose the package from a whole list of packages. But just just to make it easier, we can type also type it in at the R prompt. So we type in library, capital R, and then small letters CMDR. And press return, and that will bring up the R Commander uh, menu system. And you'll see uh, along the top here, we've got some menus, the usual sorts of things. That's the way to get out of it. We can exit from the Commander and R itself, or just from the Commander. Um, we can change your working directory, which we should do first up. And we've got a whole lot of things. We can organize data, uh, do some uh, statistical analysis and some simple summary statistics, graphics, and we can look at the results of any models and so on. So one thing that is really useful is the help. And, the, and that's the same in R. The help uh, will, will tell you uh, a lot of things that you need to know. And there's a good little document here called Introduction to R Commander. And if you go through that, you'll you'll see the sorts of things that we're talking about uh, here and um, and and other stuff beside. So what you also see is that you've also got this uh, three windows here. So you've got a script window. So that that's any time you run a command, it produces the 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 commands that you would have typed here if you run it from the menus. If you were to type them in yourself, and you can re change them and submit them again. Um, so it produces commands in this window, produces all the output in this window, and it also has some messages here. So um, it tells us that we're running this version of our commander. So the next thing to do is that we'll enter some data. We'll see along the top here we've got things about data. And basically it's saying we haven't got an active data set at the moment. Is I should say that I want a new data set. And what I'll just do is call that lead dot df because it's going to put everything in a data frame so this will be lead dot df say ok and now it'll pop up a little spreadsheet editor that we can then put data in so for the first value is 1.1 1 .1, um, and if we click on the name we can just rename that to hair lead I might just keep consistent I'll keep it lower letter lower case so pressing return gives us gives us uh, that, and I'll just put in the rest of the numbers. So we're back again. I've just put in all those numbers, and so now I can uh, just close that. And it'll tell us down here that the data set has 16 rows and one column. So I've left one out. So I've just fix that up by by editing the data set and just put in the extra value there and so we'll see that it's in this in the script window it said fix uh, lead.df and we can just check that by viewing the data set which has just gone off the edge of the screen here but I'll bring it back on and we can see that we can we can check that manually so if we'd actually wanted um, if we decided that one of those values was wrong for instance say this one down here we could change that just by clicking on it and and just typing in 2.7 uh, but I won't do that uh, just now I won't save it I'll just put it back to what it was 27 and so we can easily modify the data set change the names and, and add in extra data the other thing that we want might want to do is is to read data in uh, that we've already got. So, if for instance we wanted to uh, import some data, we can import uh, SPSS, Minitab or Starter data. Um, we can also import SAS data. That's a bit more tricky, and we, we need to do that through the um, through the command line. But we can we can certainly import Excel or or uh, database uh, data. Um, change the working directory.
So if we change the, the working directory, um, we'll see here that, I've, that we've created one here already for the demo. And then any files that we either save or open will, uh, will be in this directory here. And we can see that we can reuse this command any time we'd like uh, later on without having to go to the menus just by hi just highlighting this or clicking on it and pressing submit. So now I'll open uh, open a, um, a data set, an imported data from Excel, and I might just call that um, lead2.df. So OK, and now we can see we've got a few files here. I'll just use that one, exercise 2.2, .2. and it's if we now have a look at that data. Then uh, we'll see that see that it's basically read the data in. So I should show you that file. Um, it's just this Excel file, just with one column, but it could have a number of columns, and that would work fine. So uh, now we're ready um, to look at some summary statistics. And the, and the statistics that we we might do is just summarize the active data set, and that just gives us the minimum, median, mean maximum and, and quartiles here. So another thing that, that gives us a little bit more information is to do numerical summaries. And here we've got hair lead is the only is the only variable to choose from. It gives us a mean the standard deviation. Uh, and if we had any sort of grouping we could summarize it, split it up by groups. So we'll see here that we get out the mean, the standard deviation, uh, the number of observations here. So our data set at the moment has got only one column, one variable, and it's a, it's a numerical variable. So if I look at the, the structure here, str, if I come up into the script window, I can use any command that I like. So I can use str of led2.df. And if I submit that, that tells me down here that I've got a data frame. 17 observations and one variable. And what I might like to do is create a factor um, splitting up those, those lead levels. There's a, a number of ways I can do that, but the, the most simple way is to go up to the data menu, look at manage variables in the active data set, and we can bin a numeric variable. So we've got a numeric variable here uh, called hair lead, and we could bin that and just we could really just uh, easily set it up that R itself or R commander itself can just cluster it using an algorithm. And so we might call that, we'll just call this clustered lead, cluster lead. And it'll just create three bins by default. We can change that, of course. We'll just say OK. Now, if we look at the, the data set, what we've got is we've got um, these three groups, one one here just with this one um, one data point, the very large outlier, and uh, another one with a, with uh, values between 8.5 and 27, and then the other then the other ones that are smaller, and so it's labelled it with the with the range here, so we can see um, see what's going on. But really, we know, we know more about this data. So we know what a normal or a severe, a severe um, lead measurement is. So this is uh, lead levels in, in printery workers and looking at their hair lead. So we, we know what, what's a normal range and what's, what's a high range. So we could specify it ourselves.